for the fellow, fellow educators, I know we've had a different, uh, few different topics here. You know, uh, the idea of educators and you as being role models, and then also, you know, what are some keys to ha being having them be successful individuals? But one of the toughest parts about learning teaching is to keep them engaged and to make sure they're paying attention. So one of the things that we want to kind of first think about is that 50% of teaching is classroom management. If you can manage that class, you will get very far. It will be very important and very successful for you. But it's so important for you to understand that to manage a class, you need to know your, your children. So when is that attention span? You know that a child's attention span, a human being is only six to eight minutes. A child is about two to four minutes. And especially now with all the videos of social media, it is not easy to keep their attention. So we understand that that by itself is a challenge. Second thing is William Glasser, a uh, Harvard psychologist, talks about how students retain information. And he says that 10% is what they read, 20% is what they hear, 30% is what they see, 50% is what they see and hear. So when they could see a class when you're, when you're talking, but they're also seeing a on the board or on, on, a, on a TV screen, our, 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 our smart board, then it makes it easier for them to understand from what you're saying to what you're also, what, what I'm to get a point by seeing it visually. Then you have 70% is what they discuss with others. When they can discuss and they're learning what's happening in class, that's going to play a big part because now they have that opportunity to have that discussion, right? So when you understand that, hey, learning happens through talking, that sometimes in class there's going to be some conversations happening. But if you could control that conversation and you have certain times for conversations, that will go a long way. 80% is what they experience. When they could experience what, what you're trying to teach them through exper experiential learning to maybe science experiments to hands-on uh, 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 exper uh, experiments, that will go a long way. So that way that also when they're engaged and now they're not going to be like, okay, what to do? I want to talk to someone. But even if that engagement happens or some conversation in group work, but it's controlled conversations and they feel like, okay, I'm still getting to um, speak or socialize, but at the same time learning is happening. Then 95% is what to teach someone else. When you're teaching someone else, that's one of the greatest form of learning, right? So now if you notice from 50 to 95, there's a lot of action and movement and talking. So I want you to realize if your class is like, no, you cannot talk at all. You have to be completely silent for 40 minutes to an hour. It's not going to be easy when you realize retaining information is through some discussion, is through some experience, is through teaching someone else. You have to make sure that in your classroom that you have that opportunity. Why am I bringing this up? Before we get into classroom, uh, classroom management skills, we want to have, have a better idea of like, who are your customers, your students, how do they tick, what makes them go, how do they learn is so important. So that's why these specific things it's so important to keep in mind. So now you know, understand that social aspect, the physical and mental, uh, mental are all these aspects of uh, individual and you wanna keep those things in mind, the environment that they are and where, where, they, uh, where they come from, what support they have at home helps you understand when they are in your classroom. So getting the more information about them, the better. Even the multiple intelligence exam, if you could take that and on website, you could get many of them and find out what kind of learner they are you know, if they're spatial, you know, if they're, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, linguistic, if they are interpersonal, interpersonal, all these things will be kind of aesthetic. These will all help you to have a better understanding of what these top three, four of their, uh, of their learning styles are. So that will give you a better understanding. So when you're dealing with them or have to talk to them, or you have to talk to them about or discipline them, you will have a better understanding. Or if you have to customize that learning for them, you'll know. So that's why I think it's so important to kind of keep these things in mind.